Hello everyone and welcome to round 4 of the uh, Euro Opera Rapid Chess Tournament. It's Magnus Carlsen versus uh, 2018 US Chess Champion Sam Shankland and uh, this game uh, just shows how easy it is to break basic chess principles and then how good things happen when you do that. So Magnus has the white pieces uh, and he opens with c4 and already the fun starts with c6 so sort of a Karl Khan system against the English and now Magnus goes for the move from the thumbnail and that's queen to a4 and it looks like a really really weird idea and to tell you the truth i have no idea what uh, what this is all about uh, but probably something to use to confuse your opponent in, in a rapid game but who knows maybe it's even perfectly fine because nowadays uh, there are no uh, anti-positional moves there are no uh, you know principled moves so anything goes today in, in the era of engine so queen to a4 uh, and uh, Shankland, of course, uh, responds in a very principled manner. He just continues uh, development. Knight to f6, knight to f3 by Magnus, and now g6. He wants to uh, play bishop g7, castle, and continue development. And now there are some games where knight to c3 and g3 were played, but here Magnus goes for d4, and it's uh, already as of move 4 that we have a completely new game. So let's see how Shankland deals with this. We have uh, bishop to g7. And now knight to c3. Uh, we have castles and now uh, bishop to f4. So just nicely developing pieces. Uh, d6 and now h3. Taking away the g4 square from uh, black slight square bishop. We have knight b to d7 and now rook to d1. So again, going for a very nice development. But Carlsen's king is still on e1 and uh, it will take a few more moves for uh, for him to castle. We have c5. Uh, striking in the center here, uh, hoping for probably hoping for something like d5, and then he can go for the bishop here on f4. Maybe if bishop h2, f5, and then it's going to be very hard for for white to, to develop. The e4 square is covered, and uh, black black uh, solved all of his problems here. So here instead, Magnus goes for e3. He just prepares to develop the light square bishop. C captures on d4, e captures, and now e5. Uh, Shanklin strikes in the center. We have captures, captures, and now bishop back to e3, and now. He he uh, furthers the expansion with e4. So Carlsen needs to do something about this knight. He plays knight to d4 and now queen to e7. Adding another defender to the knight here and also just continuing development. Uh, we have bishop to e2 and now knight to c5. Attacking Carlsen's queen here on a4. Queen back to c2 and now bishop to d7. So uh, it's uh, it's looking a bit funny, this queen to a4 idea going back to c2. Uh, but for the moment, white's position is perfectly fine. And uh, once Carlsen castles, it's going to be a very nice position for him. So here uh, we have castles by Magnus. And now comes rook a to c8. Uh, and now knight d to b5. So asking what do you want to do about the undefended a7 pawn here. And Shanklin decides to eliminate the knight. As this light square bishop isn't uh, really doing all that much. So bishop captures. The other knight captures. And now a6. Chasing away the knight. And now knight to d6. Putting uh, pressure on the rook on c8. Rook to c6 by Shanklin. And now b4 by Magnus. And already we have the critical moment of the game. Uh, what would you play in this position? Uh, just, uh, just a very short question. You don't need to pause the video. Just what does your instinct tell you? So usually we say the strongest move is a move with the knight back. However, uh, this position is the exception. Here, instead of going back with the knight, we should go forward. And then good things might happen. Because now we're uh, threatening to pick up the knight here. And if the knight captures to eliminate the defender of this knight, then it's not a problem. Knight captures, we're going to capture on d3. And black will pick up the pawn here. White will still be better, of course. He he can gain a lot of activity here with rook to d7, rook to d1. The c pawn is defended, but it, it is the best course of action for black. However, after this b4 move, Shanklin said, uh, all right, uh, I often heard that the strongest move is the move with the knight back and played knight c to d7. But like we said, this is an exception. And here Magnus just played c5. And now uh, you will see how difficult it is for black to make a move here. So what do you play here? Here Shanklin goes for b6. Of course you need to challenge this uh, pawn here as it's uh, creating a beautiful outpost for the knight here. But now queen returns to a4 once again. So Carlsen doesn't play queen a4 once but twice. So attacking that knight on uh, rook on c6 and also the pawn on a6. So knight has to go back to defend both of them. And now the situation on the clock is Magnus has some 12 and a half minutes whereas Shanklin has uh, 8 minutes. So uh, Shanklin burning time a lot faster. Uh, rook to d2. Magnus doesn't really have any uh, anything to worry about. So he's just going to double up on the d file and see what happens. We have knight f to d7 now. 
opening up the dark square bishop also the knight can now come into the game you can maybe shift the knight over to d3 if possible uh, but now magnus just says nope not happening knight captures an e4 and it looks like magnus overlooked the piece but that uh, couldn't be further from the truth because if the knight is captured then bishop f3 comes with an attack on the queen and the rook is also on c6 and if the queen defends it's not a problem you just trade everything captures captures you're gonna play captures captures and now of course everything ends with captures and now white is uh, up the exchange uh, in a in a uh, well very much a winning end game so here after knight captures on e4 we have rook to e6 by shankland uh, now going definitely after the knight but now bishop to g5 putting pressure on the queen here and here we have f6 and it looks great the bishop is under attack the knight is attacked twice but again uh, it could not be further from the truth uh, so feel free to pause the video and win this game for magnus while while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, not uh, reacting to the bishop or the knight, or rather to the dark square bishop. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's bishop to c4. And now uh, simply everything wins for white here. Uh, we're just going to show a really fun line of what happens if you capture on g5. For example, if, if f captures on g5, uh, white goes for rook to d6. You add another attacker to the rook because the rook cannot move either way. And black doesn't have uh, any way of defending this. However, black has this b5 move attacking the queen and the bishop. And it seems black saves himself. But not really. Rook captures on e6. Now saying, okay, if you capture the queen, I capture your queen with check. And then everything just falls apart for black. So queen to d8, but now rook to e8 again with a discovery here. So you cannot capture because if you capture, then just rook captures and uh, white uh, will uh, have a queen and black will not. So king to h8, uh, black has to do anything, ev everything and anything to, to, to capture white queen at the end of this line. And finally, after rook captures on d8, black will capture the queen, but it is uh, not, simply not enough. Knight captures on g5 and white is completely winning. There's no defense. Uh, knight to f7 check is coming. He has a beautiful pass pawn here completely winning e even if you capture for example rook captures knight f7 check still wins back the rook king g8 and now knight captures on d8 again with a discovery for example king f8 knight e6 will now pick up the bishop doesn't really matter the rook comes into the game the pass pawn is pushed to victory that's just it so this was carlson's plan when he played bishop to c4 however shanklin said uh, okay i'm first gonna play king to h8 and now the game is still on but uh, bishop captures an e6 by Magnus, queen captures an e6, and now just bishop back to e3, saying this is not a problem because I always have this. So what do you play here? Shanklin did capture on e4, we have rook captures on d7, and now not the immediate captures, but rather b5, uh, but it's not a problem. The queen can still defend the rook from the d1 square. This is the only good move for white, so Magnus goes for it. Queen to d1. And now knight captures on d7. We have queen captures on d7. Now the material is sort of equal. Magnus is up only one pawn. But what a pawn it is. Uh, because here Shanklin played f5 and Magnus started pushing his pawn. c6. Bishop to e5. Here Magnus played c7. And it was in this position that Sam Shanklin resigned the game. And yet another victory for Magnus Carlsen. Who after losing to Wesley So in the first round uh, gets his third win in a row. So this is uh, round four. We'll see what happens in round five. Can he continue with uh, with the streak or will someone uh, end it? And uh, here you resign because there's nothing to be done. Uh, you're either queening the pawn and uh, yeah, th there's no stopping that. If you play something like queen to b7 to guard the, the square, then the bishop is still under attack. For example, queen e7 goes after the rook and the bishop, you, you simply cannot defend everything. You, you're going to get checkmated very soon. So yeah, after c7, Shankland resigned, and uh, like I said, yet another victory for Magnus Carlsen. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see what happens in the last round of, of today. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Massimo Ghisoni, BC, David Kimura, James Toynton, and Howard Gross for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon continuing the coverage uh, of this uh, opera tournament, uh, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.